Welcome everyone to the Apotheki Tales, the basics of pharmacology. Next, moving on to thiazolden dione. So these are also the insulin sensitizers. So that means they improve the insulin sensitivity or reduce insulin resistance and has no role in the insulin secretion. And the two members of this class are the pyoglitazone and rosiglitazone. Although insulin is required for their action, the thiazolden dions do not promote its release from the beta cells, so thereby the hyperinsulinemia is not a risk. Now, what is the mechanism of action? The thiazolden dions actually lower the insulin resistance by acting as the agonist for the peroxisome proliferator activated receptor gamma, which is actually a nuclear hormone receptor. Now, when this receptor gets activated, it causes the regulation of the transcription of several insulin responsive genes, resulting in increased insulin sensitivity in adipose tissue, liver and skeletal muscles. For instance, if you observe, the thiazolden dion gains entry into the adipocyte cell, which acts particularly on the PPAR gamma receptor. And this receptor further causes the transcription of the insulin responsive genes to mRNA, then gets translated. So this is the way in which it reduces the insulin resistance by making more receptors available on the surface of the cell, thereby taking up more glucose. Now the rosiglutazone has got more affinity towards PPAR gamma and pyoglutazone towards PPAR gamma compared to that of PPAR alpha. PPAR gamma is predominantly found on the adipose tissue, skeletal muscle, pancreatic beta cells, vascular endothelium, macrophages and CNS, whereas PPAR alpha is seen in liver, heart, skeletal muscle and vascular wall. Now talking about these drugs, effect of these drugs on cholesterol levels are of interest. That is the rosiglitazone increases the LDL cholesterol and triglycerides whereas the pyoglitazone decreases the triglycerides. And both of these drugs increase the HDL cholesterol which is the good cholesterol. The thiazolden dions can be used as monotherapy or in combination with other glucose lowering agents or the insulin. And remember the dose of insulin may have to be lowered when used in combination with these agents. The ADA, that is American Diabetic Association, usually recommends pyoglitazone as a second or third line agent for type 2 diabetes. And rosiglitazone is less utilized due to the concerns regarding the cardiac adverse effects. Both of these drugs are actually very well absorbed after oral administration and are extensively bound to the serum albumin. Both usually undergo the extensive metabolism by different cytochrome P450 isozymes and some metabolites of pyoglitazone have activity. Renal elimination of pyoglitazone is actually negligible with the majority of the active drug and metabolites excreted in the bile and eliminated in the fecus. Metabolites of the rosiglitazone are primarily excreted in the urine. And there is no requirement of any dosage adjustment in the renal embed patients. And these agents should be totally avoided in nursing mothers. Now talking about the adverse effects, a few cases of liver toxicity have been reported with these drugs and therefore a periodic monitoring of liver function is recommended in these patients taking the drug. Weight gain can occur because of thiazolidin dions may increase subcutaneous fat and cause fluid retention. And remember, fluid retention can worsen the heart failure. Therefore, these drugs should be avoided in patients with severe heart failure. Thiazolin dions have been associated with osteopenia and increased fracture risk. Pyoglitazone may also increase the risk of bladder cancer Several meta-analyses identified a potential increased risk of myocardial infarction and death from cardiovascular causes with rosiglitazone. And because of this reason, use of rosiglitazone was limited to patients enrolled in a special restricted access program. 
After a further review of safety data, the restrictions on rosiglitazone use were subsequently lifted. Now, what are the other uses, just like the metformin with these thiazolidin dions? The relief of insulin resistance with the thiazolidin dions can cause the ovulation to resume in premenopausal women with polycystic ovary syndrome. So, this is all about the thiazolidin dions. So, I hope you have clearly understood. If there's any doubt, comments, or suggestions, please do mail in us. Thank you.